I'm Clifton Renard Hawkins, and I'm bringing you another message from the Word of God. We pray that each uh, thing that we say is a time of fellowship and a blessing to you. Today we're dealing with the book of Philippians. Philippians was written by the Apostle Paul. The Philippians consist of four chapters, uh, 104 verses, and only one question. So today let us look at chapter 1 of the book of Philippians. Paul and Timotheus, the servants of Jesus Christ, to the saints in Christ Jesus, which are at Philippi, with the bishops and deacons. The word saints mean the set-apart ones. And that's who Paul is writing to, the set-apart ones in Christ Jesus. That is our position in Christ Jesus. The Bible, matter of fact, tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, in verse 17, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. And so today, if you're not in Christ, you're not saved. Look at verse 2. Grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God upon every remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine for you all, making request with joy. Paul believed in prayer. Paul prayed. Do you pray? Prayer is communication with God. And Paul said, always in every prayer. Paul constantly prayed for the saints. I need prayer. All of us as believers in the Lord Jesus Christ need prayer. For your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now, being confident of this very thing, he which begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. God works in the believer. His work for us is all of him. He does it. We cannot help him. He helps us. And now notice he says that he which begun, and I believe that he is God, he that be begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. One day we as believers will be with the Lord Jesus Christ. Even as it is meet for me to think this of you all, because I have you in my heart, inasmuch as both in my bonds and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel, ye are all partakers of my grace. Paul suffered for the message that he preached. He's, notice he says in verse 7, he's, he says, uh, in my bonds, Paul was imprisoned. Notice, but God is my record how greatly I long after you all in the bowels of Jesus Christ. This I pray, that your love may abound yet more and more in knowledge and in all judgment. Paul wanted this, the believers to have knowledge. He wanted them to have judgment. Notice that ye may approve the things that are excellent, that ye may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ. Paul constantly was pointing to the, the future for the believer. He tells us what we have presently. He tells us uh, uh, what we were in the past. And he tells us what we shall have in the future. Being filled with the fruits of righteousness, which are by Jesus Christ, unto the glory and praise of God. Now that word glory simply means the excellence of a person, place, or thing on display. Praise is the proclamation of excellence. So there's a difference. It says to the glory of and praise of God. I would you should understand, brethren, that the things which happened unto me have fallen out rather to the furtherance of the gospel. A lot of things happened to Paul. Read your Bible and you'll find out. But nevertheless, that brought the gospel even further. So God is 100% sovereign. God is always in control. That my bonds in Christ are manifest in all the palace and in other places, also in other places. And many of the brethren in the Lord, uh, waxing confident by my bonds, are much more bold to speak the word without fear. And that's what we should do today, speak the word without fear. There is opposition to the word, there is opposition to the truth, but we need boldness to, to declare the unadulterated, undiluted gospel. Some indeed preach Christ even of envy and strife, some also of goodwill. The one preached Christ of contention, not sincerely, supposing to add affliction to my bonds, but the other of love, knowing that I am set for the defense of the gospel. Notice the different uh, uh, motives that people have uh, in ministry, but notice he, he says that nevertheless I am set for the defense 
of the gospel, and so am I. The gospel is the good news, the good news that Christ died for our sins, and that he was buried and he arose again the third day. What then? That's the only question in that entire epistle. Notwithstanding, every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is preached, and therein do re rejoice, I rejoice, yea, and will rejoice. Likewise, that's what I rejoice in the fact that Christ is preached. And Christ is preached, and a man, a woman, boy, a girl believes on Christ, instantaneously they are made a member of the body of Christ. They have been uh, elected, they have been chosen, they have been adopted. Notice, notice what the Bible says. For I know that this shall turn to my salvation through your prayer and the supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, according to my earnest expect expectation and hope that in nothing I shall be ashamed, but with all boldness, as always, so now also uh, Christ shall be magnified in my body, whether it be by life or by death. For to me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. For the believer, death is gain. That's what the Bible says. For me to live is Christ. And that's every day. Not just when you go for a specific meeting or, or something, you hear people say, well, I think I'll put on my Sunday's best. I believe that the Christian life is a daily life. I believe that studying the Bible should be done daily. But if I live in the flesh, this is the fruit of my labor. Yet what I shall choose, I wot not. For I am in a strait betwixt two, having a desire to depart and to be with Christ, which is far better. He knew that, that, the, that he physically was needed with the believers. But he knew also that one day he would leave. And I feel the same way. Uh, that I, I believe that as this ministry is, is being uh, given to you uh, through the media, I know that I, that this is this ministry is for you to enjoy and understand and believe the Bible. But guess what, the believers? One day I'm going to go and be with the Lord. How do you know that, Clifton? Because I am saved. All believers have the hope and have the assurance that when they leave this body, they will instantaneously be with the Lord. Notice, nevertheless to abide in the flesh is more needful for you, and having this confidence, I know that I shall abide uh, and continue with you all for your furtherance and joy of faith, that your rejoicing may be more abundant in Jesus Christ for me by my coming to you again. Only let your conversation be as it becometh the gospel of Christ, your conversation, your manner of life, that whether I come and see you or else be absent, I may hear of your affairs, that ye may stand fast in one spirit, with one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel. Faith there is the body of truth that is to be believed. We are to strive together for the body of truth that is to be believed of the gospel, which gospel, the word gospel simply means good news. And in nothing terrified by your adversaries, which is to them an evident token of perdition. That word perdition, I believe, means destruction. But to you of salvation and that of God. Everything is of God. My salvation, of God. My election, of God. Uh, 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 my, my hope and, and my assurance, all of that's of God. Why do I say that? Because it's in the word of God. For to you it is given in behalf of Christ, not only to believe on it, but now notice what this verse says, but unto you it is given in behalf of Christ, not only to believe on him. So that, that's, that, that whole thing, the believing in him is given to you, but also to suffer for his sake is given for you. And the you refers to the saints, having the same conflict which he saw in me and now here to be in me. Yes, there's conflict. Yes, there's opposition. Yes, there's even controversy. But thanks be unto God for His sovereign grace that we who are saved have the assurance to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. I'm your beloved brother, Clifton Renard Hawkins.